Welcome to Dark Knight Films Reviews and Hammer Productions Night. Tonight I will be reviewing The Hound of the Baskervilles, released in 1959. The Hound of the Baskervilles stars Peter Cushing, Andre Morrell, Christopher Lee, Marla Landy, David Oxley, Francis DeWolf, Miles Nelson, Ewan Salon, John Lee Monsieur, Helen Goss, Sam Kidd, and Michael Hawkins. The Hound of the Baskervilles was directed by Terence Fisher. Now, I am not a, you know, huge fan of Sherlock Holmes. I have read a couple of the books by the legendary Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. And uh, I've seen a couple of the films with Basil Rathbone and Nigel Bruce. I just wasn't impressed with those films. Um, the acting by um, Basil Rathbone was amazing. But the comical goofball sidekick that they made Watson in um, those old movies with um, Nigel Bruce just playing him as a buffoon, I didn't care for that. Um, it was far cry from the actual novels, the way that Sir Arthur Conan Doyle had created this character. So... You know, when they did the <laughs> Robert Downey Jr. movie, I mean, I, I liked it. It was a pretty good little action variation on um, those Arthur Conan Doyle novels. But this film is a hammer version of... Um, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's character and much like everything else this company ever put out <laughs> and being directed by the great Terence Fisher it is quite an incredible Sherlock Holmes movie it might be my favorite portrayal of Sherlock Holmes on film Peter Cushing playing Sherlock Holmes is pretty damn good in here. But I've said it in the past, Peter Cushing was great in everything he was in. It just pisses me off to no end that today's um, audiences only seem to know of Peter Cushing as Grand Moff Tarkin. In Star Wars. He is so much more than just Star Wars. Um, so, yeah, his Sherlock Holmes is pretty damn good in this. But, Andre Morel is really great as Dr. Watson in here very much like the Sir Arthur Conan Doyle novels variation of this character. Um, I have talked about Andre Morel before, um, Plague of the Zombies he was in, and uh, he was in a film that I plan to review later um, on Hammer Productions Night called Shadow of the Cat. And, uh, but he is a really, really solid character actor and his Dr. Watson to, I believe, I did not time this, but I believe he has more screen time in this film than Peter Cushing's Sherlock Holmes. And, uh, I even, I even think, uh, 
Christopher Lee's uh, Sir Henry Baskerville in this has uh, more screen time possibly than uh, Holmes does. Maybe. I, like I said, I haven't timed this, so I can't say it for a fact, but um, it just seems like they both had more time on screen than Holmes. Holmes is introduced at the beginning of this film after a flashback scene detailing um, Sir Hugo Baskerville, uh, played by David Oxley. Um, and his little performance there was really over the top, and uh, I was questionable about this film at that point. But as soon as it goes to Holmes in the more um, present day at the, in this storyline, um, man, is Cushing's performance good in this, as is Andre Morel, like I said, as uh, Dr. Watson in this scene. The character of Dr. Richard Mortimer is the one that was telling the story to um, Holmes and Watson. Um, he was played by an actor named uh, Francis DeWolf, and uh, he does a really good job in this too, as well. He, he has quite a few little scenes in here off and on, and uh, he's quite good in all of his scenes. He's really a good actor in this. Um, and I really like the character of uh, Dr. Mortimer. Um, but he sets it up to where Holmes agrees to take the case and meet with um, Sir Henry Baskerville, the uh, cousin of the Baskerville family after the death of um, the latest Baskerville. And he's coming in basically to try and take over, I guess, the um, family lineage, even though all of them have been dying in mysterious ways um, since um, Hugo. And it's like a curse on the Baskerville family. And uh, after a really good introduction to Henry Baskerville, um, Christopher Lee's character here, um, who surprises me in this film because he is not playing a bad guy. Sir Henry Baskerville is a decent um, man, and he is this there to do the right thing. He is not there um to to take over and be I'm the man I'm taking over I'm you know nothing like that he is a really good man and everything in this film you're thinking there's going to be the twist that he is a manipulative asshole or something like that because it's Christopher Lee but um it's it's one of the very few roles where he is a really good guy all the way through. But I love the scene where he first meets Holmes and Watson and he mistakes them for hotel management. Well, uh, I think perhaps you've made a mistake. Yes, I've made a mistake, all right. The mistake I made was never coming to this hotel. What have you been able to find out about my other boot? That's such a great scene. Porter, the maid, the boot boy. Nobody in this hotel of yours knows where the other one's gone to. You're the manager. Perhaps you'll be good enough to tell me just what you do with all your boots. But it's funny because soon after this scene, you know, Holmes says, Watson, you go ahead and I'll be there later. And he was not kidding. Once Watson goes with Henry to the Baskerville um family home or whatever mansion or whatever you want to call it um we are following watson for a good uh 30 minutes i believe um of runtime it is all about watson and then finally uh holmes shows up oh 
I repeat, why have you left Sir Henry alone? Dr. Mortimer is with him. Forgive me if my dramatic entrance startled you. Well, it's good to see you again, Watson. It's been rather lonely up here. Which is why I say, I, I, I believe Watson... You know, Andre Morel's Watson might have more screen time in this than Holmes. Um, but once he does show up there, um, Holmes is really good, really well done by Cushing, as usual. Um, now, Marla Landy playing uh, Cecil Stapleton. She is really good in some sequences in which she... In, in the first scene she's introduced, she almost causes poor Watson to sink down into a moat and die because of her ignorance, um, running away from him like he's a threat to her or something. Um, and then later on, when she meets Henry, she almost does the same thing. Um, and you're wondering what the hell is wrong with this character? And, uh, it turns out her, uh, father, Stapleton, um, played by Ewan Solon, is, uh, really controlling and, uh, I'm not going to spoil, um, anything near the end of this for you too much right now. But if you want to see this movie, go watch it so that anything I say later in this review will not spoil it for you. All right. So um, Stapleton seems like this controlling jackass of a father. And it looks as though um, Cecil is going to become a romantic love interest to Henry. And all the while, Holmes is slowly but surely figuring out uh, the mystery of if there is truly a mysterious hound of the Baskervilles that is killing off the bloodline of Hugo Baskerville. Now, here's the, here's the uh, spoiler stuff. So if you want to see this, go watch it. Go watch it right now. And then come back and finish my review. Okay. All right. There's your warning. All right. So, like I said, Marla Landy's performance is pretty good in these early points of the film. Uh, like I said, it, it, she throws you off and you don't know what the hell to think of her when she first introduced, but then she becomes really good whenever she's in these scenes with Henry and they're looking like they're moving toward a uh, love interest relationship until the twist that Stapleton and Cecil are the real um, ones that should be inheriting everything from the Baskervilles, and that's who has been killing them. They've been using this dog that they have disguised as this monstrous beast that they have trained to kill. Marla Landy's performance in these moments when she is revealed to be working with Stapleton with this fake monster hound from hell She goes a little over the top, I believe, in her performance. Swine! You thought it was going to be easy, didn't you? Didn't you? You wouldn't be the first of your family who thought that. And you wouldn't be the first to die because of it. But other than that, I think um, this is one of the best um, Sherlock Holmes films I have ever seen. Best, I think it's one of the best adaptations of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's character um, from the novel to the screen. Um, I will give The Hound of the Baskervilles, 1959, I will give this film a 
9.9 .9 out of 10. I think uh, the Marla Landy Cecil um, end moments kind of just bring it down just slightly. Had that not been so over the top, this would have been easily a 10 for me. But what, what have you seen this film? What do you think of The Hound of the Baskervilles? If you have not seen this film, as my review made you want to see it, did it make you want to go see it? And you actually left my review and watched it and then came back to this review. Let me know in the comments down below. And, as usual, do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. Because it really does help this channel out a lot. Anyway, that is the end of another Hammer Productions night. I hope you will join me tomorrow as we go into another action movie night. I hope to see you then. Thanks for watching.